and welcome to a reading vlog. Isn't that right, Kaz? <laughs> Kaz with speed. Um, she's on the mend. She's almost done with her cone, but uh, got a little bit more of cone life left, so that'll be lots of fun. <laughs> I haven't done a vlog in a while. Hey, stop that. I haven't done a vlog in a while, um, cause, uh, I mean, I've been very busy and also, like, vlogging for my patrons kind of, like, gets all of, like, my vlogging energy out, so I just, like, don't feel like doing any additional other vlogs, but I do like doing regular channel vlogs as well, so now that I'm done with my ridiculous October TBR, I have a little bit more time in November, although not a ton, because, like, that is what's still on my TBR this month, that, and three books next to me that I'm about to go over, and then, like, I finished those already. <laughs> so, it's a lot. It's just compared to October, it's like, oh, no, no. Any hoosies, yeah. So, today and tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, this is a weekend vlog. So, you can, can you tell I haven't done this in a while? <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna be vlogging. Um, <laughs> So currently, I just started this morning while I was like tidying up because the house is a mess because Kaz got spayed and so there's just like a lot around um, from her being on the struggle bus and like she keeps getting like litter stuck in her cone and then spilling that litter all over the house and I yeah it's just been a lot so like I've kind of like left things because I'm like she's just gonna ruin it all again in two seconds so like why bother um, but it was getting ridiculous. <laughs> I was tidying this morning. Um, which is getting to be afternoon because I went to bed at 3 a.m. last night. Uh, do not recommend. <laughs> so uh, I woke up a little later and then did some tidying and I still haven't had coffee or breakfast yet and we're getting to... What time is it? It's almost 11 o'clock so I guess brunch is a thing, yes, on weekends. Um, but while I was tidying I started listening to Half the World by Joe Abercrombie, which is the second book in the Shattered Sea. I already finished my reread of Half a King, which is the patron buddy read um, for October. That's in that stack over there. Yeah, the second time through, um, I do, I will say, even though I'm listening to Half the World and it's the same narrator, um, I feel like the narrator doesn't do these books justice. Uh, he's not bad. It's just like the Shattered Sea as compared to First Law feels so dry and boring and dull and flat which sounds very harsh, but I mean, it's as compared, like, it's not bad, it's just as compared to First Law, you're like, where's the pizzazz? So, um, that said, some of it's to do with the narrator, because, like, if you really listen to what he's saying, a lot of it is, like, quippy and sarcastic and witty, but he's reading it really, like, dead and dry and, like, not sarcastic if that makes sense so like while you're you're going through it you're like this feels very serious and dry but you're like no he's just all these things that are actually like sarcasm and bits of wit he's just not reading them like that um so i kind of recommend not doing audio it's not terrible it's just very dry and on i mean he's no stephen pacey that said a lot of people said that the other books in the series are a lot better than half a king and i was like well maybe it's just a narrator but I'm still listening to this on audio because I have it from the library and, you know, it's efficient while I'm cleaning uh, to have something to listen to. So I thought I might, you know, flip back and forth and read some of this instead of just listening to it. Um, but even though the narrator is still the same and he still has the same kind of problems, uh, he this book is already a lot more interesting to me and I barely started it this morning. Um, I'm not very far into it. It follows the main character from Half a King is still in it but he's not the main character. It's a different main character. There's more than one main character. We have multiple perspectives now which Half a King didn't have and I'm already liking it more so yay for that. I always had hopes when people said the rest of the series is better. I was like I sure hope so. Anyway so Half the World just started it today and I am rereading uh, the Name of the Wind this month. I did barely start it, as you can see. And uh, yeah, this is my third time reading Name of the Wind. Uh, November seems always like a good time to be reading Name of the Wind, because it's not an october -y book. It's like it's not like a spooky book, and it's not a Christmas book, but it is very much a fall book, so uh, November is a good time for that. So I'll probably chug along through a bit of Name of the Wind. And I need to film some regular channel videos today, and one of those videos I need to, I mean, I'm not going to try to reread Name of the Wind before I film it, and I don't need to, but Name of the Wind is going to be relevant to that video, so I kind of want to, like, read a bit and, like, get my brain heading to the halls of my mind palace where the Name of the Wind stuff is stored. So, Name of the Wind. And then, it's time, I think, to start the Wheel of Time. 
the show comes out November 9th, November 19th, I think. So I, I want to start reading this now. And I was thinking maybe of just vlogging separately this and then my reaction to the show. But um, I've obviously decided against that because I'm considering starting it here. That said, uh, I might vlog again later this month when I'm watching the show and then then you'll get my thoughts there. So anyway, I'm um, hoping to start The Eye of the World this weekend as well. So I have kind of a lot going on and I've got a late start. Um, but yeah, so I need to be reading those books and get as far as I can get in them and film some regular channel videos, vlog for y'all, and you know, do some, you know, eating, sleeping, this sort of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel <laughs> very tired <laughs> from going to bed so late, so I kind of just want to sit on the couch, drink coffee, and watch Great British Bake Off for like five hours, but no, we are reading, and that's part of the reason I'm vlogging, because, <laughs> uh, you know, if I'm vlogging, then I can't just be a couch potato. I have to actually read, so I can do it. I can, and I will, and you shall see it. Anyway, um, I probably should make some breakfast or something. Coffee at the very least, so let us do that. <laughs> I'm 
still very much in the beginning, um, in this beginning bit of uh, Eye of the World. <laughs> and um, it's just this little girl like faffing around her town so that she can info dump at us about her town and who inhabits the town and what they're like and what the town's feast days are and what a water carrier is. And it's just like, okay, not exactly like an exciting start to this book, but whatever. Older fantasy books, older books in general, weren't too worried about like wowing you on the first page. Like I get that. But um, when people say that Robert Jordan's strong suit is not characters, I already think I feel like I know why. Because right, this is like, you know, close third person. So like it's in third person, but we're clearly seeing things from the perspective of this little girl who is worried about people thinking of her as a little girl and like wants to be seen as one of the big kids, but she doesn't get why like the older kids would like look romantically each other, at each other like no um so she's like very much a little girl so she thinks about things kind of in a silly way which is kind of annoying but also like that's that's actually fine that's what makes this uh, like a believably pers the perspective of a little girl but since we're also info dumping about the town this little girl thinks a lot of things to herself and i'm like what little kid thinks like that so like for example um she's looking at this kid that she knows is a little bit older than her and he, she's watching him. Um, she's observing like how he's swinging his water bucket around and um, that it's probably empty the way he's swinging it. You, uh, and it said that she, this little girl, she frowned. The furtive was the only word to describe him as she's like trying to figure out what he's up to. What little girl thinks that someone is furtive? No, no little girl, that's who. And then similarly, she's observing this other boy's mother. She says, Jocelyn Abara was a pretty woman. And when she smiled, it seemed the sun might hide its head in defeat. I'm sorry, a little girl's perspective is saying the sun might hide its head in defeat about some adult woman's smile? Like, this doesn't feel like it's genuinely this kid's perspective. I mean, it does because she says a lot of silly things. Like, when she's complaining about how the kids treat her and how she's, you know, she's older than that and whatever. And she's annoyed with them and she's like proud of herself for like bringing up dolls to one of the girls and being like haha what's a great comeback and i'm like okay that makes you seem like a kid this other stuff doesn't so like either make this a close third person narrative from this kid's perspective or don't <sighs> but this halfway between the two is just it's weird info dumping and inconsistent inconsistent character voice so far and i am this is my introduction to this so we're off to a good start <laughs> Talk about where it's going wrong. We're still young. We don't know where we're going, but we know where we belong. Oh, we started two hearts and one home. It's hard when we argue. We're both stuck. Sweet creature, wherever I go, you bring me home. Sweet creature, sweet creature, when I run out of road, you bring me home. So I'm basically editing this book in my head as I go, which is never a good sign. But like, okay, so I don't like the writing style, which no one is surprised. There's so many times when like, yes, it's overly descriptive and people, plenty of people warn me about that. So I went in and expecting just copious amounts of description, which there are. But the thing about even copious amounts of description, like the efficient use of words is appreciated. And not just because, I mean, like description is arguably extraneous in any amount, but when you belabor the point then it's it draws the attention even more to it you're like you're already doing description which is like again like more flavoring than actual meat and when you overdo it and you 
duplicate your efforts. Now you're wasting my time twice over, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to make a selling description. It's always a waste of time. But it is like, you know, like, I think I'm making sense. Anyway, so I've just been generally annoyed with the writing style, but I just felt like the perfect example of like, why did no one catch this on an edit? Uh, or maybe they did, and he was like, I like it like that, which, you know, you know how men be. But, um, okay, so this feller is walking around. We're getting tons of description of his clothes and his quiver of arrows and his bow, which is in his hand, and he knows how to use it because of this and such person teaching him, and you're like, okay, that's a lot of information, or whatever. So we get to hear about all the different weeds and things that he's walking on. So only trees that kept a leaf or needle through the winter had any green about them. Snarls of last year's bramble spread brown webs over stone outcrops under the trees. Nettles numbered most among the few weeds. The rest were the sorts with sharp burrs or thorns, or stinkweed, which left a rank smell on the unwary boot that crushed it. Stinkweed is a really uninspired name, but, I mean, naming it that, at least, you know, you don't have to explain what it is, because it's a dumb name, but it's clear to any reader what stinkweed is. But no, we named it something obvious and dumb, and explained it. Stinkweed, which left a rank smell on the unwary boot that crushed it. Do you see what I mean? Like, stinkweed is already descriptive enough, so just leave it at that. Or if you want to give it an actual kind of proper sounding name, like an actual name for the plant, make up a random jumble of syllables that sounds like the name of a plant, and then explain that it's stinky. But to say stinkweed, which left a rank smell on the unwary boot that crushed it, I'm just like, yeah, no, duh. Why are you wasting my time with this? <laughs> so I don't know that it's necessary to tell me about all the weeds at all. And then you named it stinkweed, which is like, okay, well, it's very obvious what that is, so. And then you explained what stinkweed is, which, you know what stinkweed is? It's exactly what you thought it was. It's a stinky weed. <laughs> so like, do you see? Like, that's why I'm like this this needs an editor because it's constantly stuff like that where I'm like, I mean, already the POV doesn't really match the voice because of what is being called attention to by the person where I'm like, this kid wouldn't be thinking about that. This kid wouldn't think those words. This kid wouldn't have that perspective. And then these over descriptions were again, like multifold. Don't need to know about the weeds, but okay, you told me about the weeds. And then you explained the weeds. Like, <laughs> Okay. Okay. So. I don't think I'm gonna like this book, but we're gonna crack on. Gotta get to class, how dare you? And how could you? Will you only feel bad if they find out if you could take it all back? Would you try not to abuse your power? I know we didn't choose. To change You might not want to lose your power But having is so strange I thought that how special you made me feel Like it was my fault You were the devil lost your appeal 
Well, good afternoon. <laughs> I have spent the morning catching up on where I hoped to get to yesterday in Eye of the World. Um, cause last night I ended up just finishing Luther, like, or I keep calling it Luther, Lucifer. Um, so I did, I finished like the whole, like what was left of this series, like it's done, it's over. So it won't just, the desire to binge watch it will no longer distract me. <laughs> just got it over and done with. So yeah, uh, I'm, a little over 100 pages into Eye of the World and oh my god it's so bad it's so bad oh I really hoped that I could feel you know meh about it like I thought it extremely unlikely that I would love it and I was like maybe I'll just feel like it's it's fine like not my cup of but like it's whatever it's so it's honestly so painful to read every other line is a pointless and bad and an aggravating simile and the whole time, like nearly every, it's exhausting to read because nearly every sentence, my brain is wanting to edit it, wanting to rewrite it, wanting to cut it out entirely. Like I'm not wanting to proof it. I just, my brain can't stop from editing it as I go. It's just, I can't turn it off. Um, and I keep thinking too about like, you know, Abercrombie's thing of always asking if, uh, what, about whatever he writes, is that true? And like, again, with all the similes, like, no, it's not true. This is, why is this here? This is not helping to illustrate, like, visually what's going on. It is not helping to flesh out the characters. It is just the author thought that this made it sound cool, but really it just, like, wasted even more time and didn't help to flesh anything out. And oh my god, okay, so one that, like, really aggravated me. Okay, and so, like, they've been attacked. Um, I guess mild spoilers, but I'm hardly into it and it's like it seems very clear that that's going to happen That too like these first hundred pages almost nothing happens And I'm not just talking about like, you know plot wise nothing happens because also plot wise almost nothing happens But I don't mind if plot wise nothing happens if we are still really getting like a deep dive into the characters really getting to know them or getting, I don't know, a lot of lore or something like that, but this is just so surface level and painfully so and I mean, I don't care that it's derivative. I really don't care if things are derivative. I don't, and you don't have to be original. You just have to do it well. You have to be writing a story that feels real and compelling and immersive. And again, like you can have a village and you can have a dark evil force that people are afraid of that's become the stuff of, I mean, yeah, like 10 billion books do that. But if you do it well, it doesn't matter. This is not doing it well. Oh my God. Okay, anyway, so yeah, they get attacked and uh, Okay, all of the similes that are in, uh, what's his name, Rand's mind about what's going on. I'm like, who in the middle of panicking about being attacked by a creature that he thought was out of myth and lore would be coming up with similes in his head about how he's sneaking around like a mouse in a hawk's nest. And I'm like, uh-uh. And just like all of this thinking to himself things that just feels like a narrator trying to flesh things out in a way that takes all the tension out and doesn't make him seem like a character or if it is like a really dumb character and um and then so like his father and him like sort of like reconvene uh in the woods and uh you know the like the things that attack them are still nearby so they're like you know trying to like speak in hushed tones except having like a full-on expository dialogue where i'm like and at one point like he even draws attention to it he like tells him to hush and to keep his voice down and then as soon as he said, hush, keep your voice down, then has like a paragraph of like talking about what they need to do next. And I'm like, 
who like crouching in the woods afraid that these crazy animal beastie demon things trollocs that's what they're called I'll just they're just called trollocs anyway would come they came and attacked you and you barely escaped and you think they're still around and you're crouching and hiding and you're like panicking about it but also like you're trying to like figure out what to do who speaks in paragraphs at each other like this like it's ridiculous it doesn't feel real it doesn't feel tense like like they're they're doing like info dumps about like what they believe about Trollocs and why you know they thought they were from myth but obviously they're not and what to do next and I'm like this is not the time for this like this what why are they having this conversation right here right now like, can you imagine crouching and hiding from beasties and having a full-on conversation about them and about what to do no no you wouldn't you would do that later when you well and truly made your escape like having like a brief moment of just like oh my god i can't believe they're real like that would be enough that would be enough to convey to the reader that like this is something out of stories and you can't believe you're encountering them not full sentences about how like you thought they were from myth and legend but like oh wow i guess they are real like you wouldn't say all of that you just wouldn't um also you know dad got injured he got you know uh i guess stabbed or hurt in some way and he's bleeding but also so this happened like a minute ago right you know they've just made it to the forest and they're still crouching and hiding in the thing that did them and his son notes that you know he's like really hot like he has a fever and i'm like who would have a fever i'm not an expert on wounds or wound care or like bodies reactions to wounds but i'm pretty sure you don't develop a fever a minute after getting stabbed i'm pretty sure if you have a fever that is caused by a wound it is because that wound has has become infected so this whole he's feverish like one second after getting like if the, he's feverish because the blade that struck him is magical in some way well then now's the time to be thinking paragraph long thoughts rand about how people don't get a fever when they get stabbed immediately so there must be something more to this blade maybe the blade is poisoned maybe it's a magic blade that is hurting him in some way but no he seems like it's, you know, upsetting that dad's been injured, but it seems in no way out of the ordinary that he'd have a fever immediately. Immediately! <laughs> and, I mean, feverish dad who got stabbed was also able to have this paragraphs long dialogue with his son about what's going on and what to do next. Like, I just, I just cannot with this. I just cannot. <laughs> oh my god. So these first hundred and, how much page do we have? 114 pages could have been 20 pages and they could have been paced so much more economically like there I cannot even tell you how many times the village the townspeople said the same thing over and over to each other in different versions of it just so you could like get a bunch of names of townspeople and then get the vibe that they all think and feel this way like I mean you do not need to do that for 100 pages you don't a few a few sentences could convey this very effectively and it wouldn't, like, if you're worried about telling instead of showing, it's doing tons of telling. So if you're going to be telling anyway, because the whole point of, like, going through a town like this and hearing what everybody has to say would be, I guess, in theory, to show rather than tell. Instead of saying everybody's talking about this, you know, you want to show everybody talking about this. There's tons of telling and people just constantly speaking in, ex in expository ways that no one ever would. And just the similes, the constant similes that are stupid. Like, oh my, and this isn't even a simile, but it annoyed me for the same reasons that the similes do. But uh, Rand is, you know, crawling around on the ground trying to, like, hide and get away, right? And uh, he crawled on across the farmyard, keeping as low as he could, but trying to watch every direction, too. He had never thought he would envy an earthworm. Who would, okay, that's stupid, but who would think that? Who would think that while they're trying to crawl away and hide from these things that attacked? You wouldn't be crawling around trying to hide and be like, oh, never thought I'd envy an earthworm. Like, do you see what I mean? That's not like, it's not helping to flesh out the character because no, what character would think this way? None, none. Uh, it's that line, you could just cut it. It doesn't serve any purpose. The fact that he's crawling around, got it, he's crawling around, makes sense. What purpose does the earthworm sentence serve? Other than to annoy me. And it, well, if that was the purpose, it succeeded. And I just, I mean, the amount of times that people say things that are meant to make it sound old timey, or like make it sound like fantasy, even though the prose and the dialogue is quite 
modern and basic, but then they'll say things like, you know, oh, but that is just from myth and legend, or those are stories of the olden days, and I've heard it told. Like, that kind of thing where I'm just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, great. Um, also, the number, the sheer number of nouns that have been capitalized, of like just regular nouns that have been capitalized to make them like a thing. Like people make fun of uh, YA dystopians for doing that. YA dystopians ain't got nothing on the eye of the world. I should have counted how many, not just how many times those words appeared because then that would be like in the hundreds, but how many different just regular nouns got capitalized to mean a thing that's like special in this world. Oh my god. I don't think I can do this. Like I'm really considering just DNFing this because I know it's not gonna get better. I know that. In fact, I also know that if I was to continue in this series, which I absolutely will not happen, um, there are books that are considered bad by the people who love this series, The Slog. This is supposed to be one of the not sloggy ones, one of the good ones. So I would say the first hundred pages of this was a slog. A slog of BS exposition constant telling over showing just like absolute nonsense just oh my god oh my god has Brad, did robert jordan ever meet human beings does he think people talk like this because they do not oh my god i cannot with this i'm so angry i just i just I'm, i mean i'm gonna read a little further before i decide to dnf this also that yeah so like since i stayed up and watched luther Lu lucifer not luther instead um, I don't think I'm gonna film any regular channel videos today because I would like actually like to get some reading done. All the reading that I didn't get done yesterday because I watched Luther. And... Lucifer! Why do I keep calling it Luther? I know Luther's also a show, a show that I like. But um, yeah, so I think my new method is going to be, because these are all, if you were wondering why I have tabs when I clearly have not gotten that far in the book yet, um, these are just like goal chunks for like when I sit down to read. So I'm not like, oh my god, I have to finish this whole book. I can never... Uh, with longer books I often put like reading checkpoints in. So like my goal isn't to finish it, my goal is to get to the next sticky. And it's roughly like a little over 100 pages for each sticky. But anyway, yeah, so I think my new method is going to be to uh, treat myself to a chapter of Name of the Wind after each sticky uh, as like a reward for getting through it. However, that might be a terrible idea because I already think that this is badly written. And then to juxtapose it so immediately with the prose of Patrick Rothfuss might be unduly cruel <laughs> to the eye of the world, which never had a chance in hell of measuring up to Patrick Rothfuss, even at its best. So maybe I won't do that. But I need something, some kind of carrot to get me through. Anyway, so that's how I'm doing with this. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, but uh, I'll crack on. Around the throne 
Hi. Very rude. Very rude, Giles. So I originally planned to make it to my second checkpoint. Not quite gonna make it, I don't think. <laughs> um, I'm at page 174. I finished chapter 10. I might read a bit more today, but honestly... I hate it so much! <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, I don't care that it's derivative. I really don't. I, I almost never care that things are derivative. Like, that's never going to be the thing that I complain about. It might be a thing that I point out. Um, I'm more likely to apologize for it in something that I like than to complain about it in something that I dislike. Um, but so, well, hello, Kaz. And yes, Precious? Come here. Hmm? Wanna say hi to everybody? They're really here to see you, not me. I know it thinks you're way cuter. Especially with your comb. Are you the cutest little baby kitty? Are you the cutest? She's the cutest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna block my face with her. That's who you're here to see, I know. Mm -hmm. What's the matter, baby? <laughs> yeah. You're okay. Anyway, um, yeah, back to the eye of the world. Um, there's just so many things. Okay, so I've already, already complained about the sim. I think I complained about the similes. There's so many similes, and they're not good similes. And they're they're both not good in terms of like describing or helping to describe a thing. They're also not good in terms of developing characters. They're just like extra. What's the matter, baby? What? What's the matter? You want to read Eye of the World? And then there's just like a ton of little things that like make the world not actually feel like it's well built or well thought out. Um, it's just like been oh, what's like an old timey vibe without actually like making any kind of sense like. There's like white linen napkins at the inn in this backwater town and they have a, a down comforter using the word comforter. And I'm like, do they have comforters in like quasi medieval villages? I don't think so. And I think like it's really, really like they have like a goose feather pillows and whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. This seems a bit fancy for this tiny town, but whatever. And then there's this whole thing of, uh, so they're leaving the town now, right? Because like... <laughs> Because this is the Fellowship of the Ring, so they've been attacked by Trollocs, and then now they're leaving to go on the grand adventure, the grand quest, and they need a horse. And so Rand, his dad's like doing better now, he's on the mend, but he was injured. He's leaving his dad now on his own, because he's going off on this quest. And the horse that like fled when the Trollocs attacked, it actually went to the town, so the horse is there, and that's the only horse that I am, as far as I can tell, that Rand and his father have. And so now this like girl from the town wants to go with them on this quest and she's basically doing a Mary and Pippin where she's like I'm coming too where are we going um and they're like we're being attacked by Trollocs and she's like Psh, that's ridiculous you just want to go see the world I'm coming too no one disabuses her of this like I don't I guess it's being played for last but I mean like she doesn't believe her peers when they say this is happening but the Ace to die Moiraine is standing right there and she doesn't go like no I mean they're serious like they are really being pursued by Trollocs, so just, you know, if you do still want to come with us, that's important to know. No, she doesn't. She just lets this girl think that this is just a for fun adventure, which is just irresponsible and stupid and just really stupid. But anyway, so they need another horse now for this girl that wasn't supposed to go on their quest. So Rand volunteers their horse, Bella. And as far as I know, that's the only horse that he and his dad have. He's leaving his dad now with like a farm that has no more sheep in it because the Trollocs killed them all and there's like other mess to clean up and his dad is still recovering from this like life-threatening injury that he had and now he's gonna not have a horse because Rand was just like I'm offering our horse not asking dad about it just we're taking the horse too and he uh mentions or like he's thinking to himself that he usually when he does ride Bella which isn't often because I guess they use her to like pull the cart um he usually rides her bareback she's not used to having a saddle so when he grabs a saddle to put on her, she's like weirded out by it. 
And I'm just like, whose saddle are you using? Like if you don't regularly use a saddle for this horse, presumably you don't own a saddle for this horse. So whose saddle are you taking? Because in a small village like this, where you're complaining about the fact that your crops are failing and the sheep are being killed, and you're like a very small town out in the middle of nowhere, like the just end of the world, you don't just have like extra saddles lying around. Like that's an expensive thing to have. So like, did you, you wouldn't just like casually have one lying around that like, oh, no one's using this. Let me just take this saddle. Like that belongs to someone and this isn't addressed. And it's like stuff like that, where I'm like, I wouldn't have questioned it, if they had just said, well, to use our horse and like, I got her saddle on her and we're good to go. Like I'd still question him taking the horse away from the dad who probably needs it, but I wouldn't question the saddle thing. But you've gone out of your way to tell me that you don't use a saddle with this horse, but you're just grabbing a saddle and putting it on his horse. And I'm like, whose saddle? <laughs> so like stuff like that just completely rips me out of the story all the time because like the characters are thinking things that they wouldn't, doing things that like I'm like, have more questions than answers about that. Like we get tons of info dumps about how they shear their sheep and whatever. Hey, stop that, Kaz. Um, but then there's this like a whole saddle situation. And I, don't know if, I feel like I'm making a big deal about the saddle, but it's stuff like that where I'm like, it's the little things that like, if you're gonna constantly throw bullshit detail at me that no one asked for about like the names of the weeds in the forest that you're tramping on, well, then you can't not think about the details when it comes to something like a saddle because like honestly that is immersion breaking because if you want me to feel like this is a real lived in world then the having or not having a, of a saddle would be important to this person's life it would be more logical it would be more reasonable for Rand to be thinking about where he's going to get a saddle from when his horse doesn't have one than for him to be comparing or saying that he never thought he'd envy an earthworm when he's trying to run away from the trollocs what baby what are you whimpering about hmm what? I have a similar problem with like the mayor or you just like tossed out the fact that you have a mayor and I'm like, is the mayor elected? Is, the, is this is a hereditary position? Are you guys paying taxes to any kind of like central government or are you out on your own here and there is no central government because that has not been addressed. We get lots of info dumping about other things, but I'm like, I don't actually know how this world and economy works. So like, again, if you didn't say that he was a mayor, if he was just like a town elder, then I'd be like, sure, a town elder. But a mayor, that's a very specific position. So I'm now asking, how do you have a mayor? <laughs> Who chooses the mayor? Who made him the mayor? Does he, the mayor answer to a governor? Like, how does any of this work? So you're going off on this quest to this wider world. And I'm like, I don't even understand how this like little microcosm works because you've told me a lot of bullshit detail about stuff that I didn't need to know about, but then neglected to consider the details when it comes to other things. So like, you kind of have to do all or nothing if you're gonna bother with that amount of detail. So I hate it. Basically, I hate it. The prose is bad. The characterization is bad. Frankly, the world building is at least poorly described. Um, and of course, then it is extremely derivative. And like it being derivative is not its major crime. That's just like doesn't help. Like because at the very least, if everything else that I just said was true, but there were some really original world building ideas, I'd be like, all of that is still true. So like, if you need to fix it. <laughs> but at least you've got some fresh ideas. So like, at least we can say that for it, but we can't say that either because it's completely derivative. So I cannot think of a single positive thing to say about this book. Like literally, like, I can't do a compliment sandwich because I cannot think of a single compliment to pay it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it so much. So I'm excited to crack on with it. <laughs> Uh, kill me now. Anyway, um, I gotta feed this little hellion who is whimpering and whining at me. Is that what you want? You want food? <laughs> you can hear that, but anyway, um, thanks for watching if you're still here. Um, and let me know all the things in the comments down below. I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you want to see more vlogs. <laughs> And I'll see you when I see you.